surprised a lot of folks since there's so much disinfo out there in this spiritual war and spiritual info war. What was surprise many to know is that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, taught Kabbalah. He taught the true Kabbalah. He taught Kabbalah. Kabbalah. This is what the Bible really speaks of. But there's a there is the synagogue of Satan version or perversion of the Kabbalah or Kabbalah that is so called referred to as Jewish mysticism. But the key is Christ. Jesus Christos is the key because when they read the Old Testament or they read Moses, there is still a veil which is over their eyes in the reading of Moses. But the basic fact is, according to principles and according to the etymological and the root of the matter, is that Jesus Christ taught Kabbalah. Right? He taught Kabbalah. And let's bring this forward and do a comparison right here because we're about to get into the, the second portion of this Torah teaching. Here's, here's what we see going on with Christ and the cross. Right? That's what we see going on with Christ and the cross right there, the Kabbalah or the Kabbalah, the tree of life. Right? And there's many different um, um, artistic and um, imaginative um, visualizations of this basic principle, either as a tree or an inverted tree. So what is interesting is that, you know, the, the tree is kind of inverted from the head. The head is the roots, right? Why he says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The world will say, well, um, the truth will set you free. You hear people saying that. And what Satan does is what he did before. He will abbreviate and deviate the word. Same thing with the temptations in the wilderness, what we find Satan is quoting scripture, but he is quoting scripture out of its proper and its due and its due context, right? He is quoting scripture out of context. So Christ, Jesus Christos, our Lord and Savior, taught Kabbalah, right? But he taught the true reception and receptivity to the spirit of truth to the word of truth and his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and his resurrection represents the entirety of the mishtir or the mystery parabolically, proverbially, and in verbal hieroglyphics expressed and known as Kabbalah or Kabbalah. The root word is Kabbalah. Kabbalah is an Afro-Shemitic and Ethiopic root, which means to receive, right? To be receptive to, to receive, right? To receive. And we find this very well expressed in the Gospels and in the writings of our Epinostikoi Christian brother, Hawaria Paulos, Paul explain. Paul is well familiar with this, the Apostle Paul. This is why when Peter, in speaking of Paul's writings, Peter says something very interesting according to what we have as uh, Peter's um, gospel. And let's just turn right here and go to what uh, Peter's gospel basically expresses concerning the wisdom of, that Paul was given. If we go to Second uh, Peter chapter 3 and we read verse uh, uh, 15, 3 and 15, or from 314, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him, be shalom, that you may be found of him in peace. He is our shalom. His shalom he gives to us, right? In the innermost of the inner. So his shalom abides in our mechdes, in our house, in our holy place, in our temple, in the tabernacle, within the innermost of the inner, in the inner sense. That shalom, that salam, 
that Shabbat, that rest in the inner sense without spot, right? Without any sort of blemish and blameless as the blameless Ethiopians. Remember that one, the blameless. And they were blameless when they kept to this true testimony in word and in spirit of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So verse 15 says, an account that the long suffering of our Lord, of Adonenu, of Gitachin, of our Lord is salvation. So the long suffering, where did he long suffer? How does he long suffer? He long suffers for us because he is the father's sacrifice, the father's lamb, the lamb of Jah the Lamb of God on our behalf. Even as our beloved brother, Paulos, Paul, also according to the wisdom, the Tibeb, the Chokma, the Sophia, given to him, hath written to you. Written where? Written in the scriptures, in the Bible. As his majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Our glory is in the living word, that is written in the Bible, living in that word, having that word in us in spirit and in truth, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. So it might be hard for some to understand when we say that Christ taught the true Kabbalah or Kabbalah, right? The true Kabbalah. The key of the Kabbalah is Yeshua, because when they read the Old Testament, the synagogue of Satan, when they read the Old Testament, there's a veil that is over their eyes. There is a veil that's over their physical eyes. They cannot see and refuse to receive his humanity, his blackness, his racial blackness, his Ethiopianness. Right over their physical eyes, there's a veil, and then over their spiritual eyes to really recognize what he has done for us. And all they need to do is kebele, makebel, is to receive, but they refuse to receive, receive the truth. And as it says, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned, those who are unlearned. That's why when Christ says, he says, have ye not read in the scriptures? Therefore, one ha has to be able to read the scriptures. So when we look into the history of Christendom and Christianity, we see where people, Christians were forbidden to read the scriptures, right? To read for themselves. Now they have a whole bunch of mistranslations and translations out there and people have been uh, hoodwinked and bamboozled by the popular or the worldly, the, the, the Gentile um, antichrist or the, 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 twi the, the perversions of Christianity. Christianity has over 30,000 denominations, 30,000. Can you imagine 30,000 different types of Christians who are looking at this word and they come up with 30 different thousand types of, of, of points of view. Can you imagine that? Well, that's the reality, right? The reality amongst those, right? Um, which are unlearned. They're unlearned in the true orientation. They've been disorientated, right? And unstable. They're unstable. There's no groundation. There's no foundation, groundation. Matthew chapter 13 speaks well in the parable of the sower to that key of the groundation, preparing the good ground, preparing the good ground in our hearts and our minds through the repentance, through the metanoia, through that change, right? That change of mind, that change of, of opinion. They do not have a good opinion of the king of kings. They do not have a good opinion opinion, right, of black Jesus or of Jesus as a black man, of Yeshua in his Ethiopianness, his Ethiopian reality. They do not have a good opinion. And why is that? Because they have been deceived, 
right? And they are unlearned. They are unstable. They have not come to the acknowledgement of the truth. They've heard the truth. They've heard the truth. They hear this truth. But will they receive the truth? Will they become learned and stable and stop wrestling, right, with the reality? We say Jesus is black and they wrestle with it. And then you go wrestle back with them. That is foolishness, right? Unlearned, they are unlearned and unstable. They rest as they do also the other scriptures to their own destruction, to their own downstruction. Yet, therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, right? Seeing you what? Have faith in them? Seeing you heard them? No, seeing ye know, right? Knowing, right? The gnosis, the gnosis, knowing these things before, beware lest, unless ye also being led away with the error of the wicked. Well, how do we tell what kind of a tree a tree is? By its fruit. So we can see the fruit of various different Christianities. We can see the fruit of various different type of Judaisms. We can see the fruit of the various different types of husband men whom the householder has let out his vineyard right, to them to bring forth fruit. So we can see what kind of fruit they have brought forward. They have been led away with the error of the wicked and fall from your own steadfastness, your own firmness. But here's what the divine Melchotawikal says, the divine word says to us, but grow in grace, right? But grow in grace. What is grace? But grow in grace. And in the knowledge, in the what? In the gnosis, right? In the Gnostic, right? Be a Gnostic of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be a knower, right? A, 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 a one who knows the truth because the truth that you know shall set you free. That's the context of it. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And amen. Now the key, the key is the grace and truth, is grace and truth. The key to this tree, the key to the tree of life. So when we say that Jesus Christos, that Jesus Christ, speaking to the Gentiles, Jesus Christ, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach, to the Hebrews, right? Jesus Christos, right, to the Greeks. Jesus Christos to the Ethiopic Christian, right? We're speaking one and the same, Jesus Christos, right, to the Spanish speakers. So that ones understand, Ja is not anal, right? So if one says Jesus, right, we know there's no J's, but let's not make the whole ministry of his majesty, of the king of kings, about th those points, straining your eye, at a gnat, right? At, at a little bed bug, so to speak, and then swallowing, right? The, the, the dragon swallowing, right? An entire camel. So when we say that Yeshua, that Jesus, that Jesus Christ taught Kabbalah, we're saying that he taught the true Kabbalah. And this is one of the reasons why they had said, the Jews said among themselves, where did this man learn these things? Because they know they kept these, these mysteries, right? The keys of the kingdom of heaven to themselves, just as they do to this day as well. Giving ones a superficial and artificial and therefore a false version and perversion of Christianity, right? A false imagery of Christianity, right? Where his truth is an offense to the world. Mm-hmm. His racial blackness, right? As we say blackness today, you, you understand the context that we're using these words. His racial blackness is rejected, right? His truth, the inner truth of what he is teaching about, about our state of mind, saving ourselves, saving humanity from its deceived and deluded self. And now this brings us 
straight forward to the second part of this 33rd Sabbath, Sabbath 33rd, Be'chukotai, Be'sur'ate, brings us to the second part of this reading for the Burt Chadasha, the Hadis Kidan, the Adis Kidan, the New Testament reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18. So before we get into that, we wanted to get into this and remind ones that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, teaches the true Kabbalah of God, the true Kabbalah, the Kebele. He is the tree of life. 